Subtraction. Um, what you need to do you've got to convert back to rectangular form. So we need to convert to Cartesian or rectangular. So you've then got 1 plus root 3i and minus 3 over 2 uh, plus 3 root 3 on 2i and then we add those two bits together. So 1 minus 3 on 2 is negative a half. Uh, root 3i plus 3 root 3 on 2, so the root 3i would be 2 root 3 on 2i plus the 3 root 3i then gives us 5 root 3 on 2i. Right, so for addition and subtraction we have to go through um, that process. Fortunately, for multiplication and division, there's some other patterns. And in fact, for multiplication and division, sometimes it's easier to do it with the polar form than it is with the Cartesian. So, multiplication. So 
proof of this is in your textbook. If you want to look, if you're interested. And it's page 175. But essentially, if you have two complex numbers in polar form, so Z1, R1, cis, theta1, and the other one, Z2, is R2, cis, theta2, then essentially when we multiply those two together, Z1 and Z2, you take the modulus and you multiply those together and the angles we add those together. So the proof of how all that works is in your textbook. Now, what does that look like on a graph in polar form? So, I'm going to do a couple of different ones. So, Z1 might be, say, represented by this here. So, there's theta1, and that's R1. So, that's Z1. Z2 might be represented by this one, so there's R2, and theta2 is in here. And so when we multiply those two things together, it's going to be out here somewhere. So the length of that, the modulus of that, is R1 times R2, and this angle, let me try and draw it somewhere where it's, that angle in there is simply the sum of those others. So here's our real axis. So far I've got an example, so I'm going to simplify the following. Two cis on three times root three cis three pi on two. All right, so if we follow the pattern that we did, the pattern says that when we multiply those together, you multiply your two R values and you add your angles. Now, of course, we need to, to add the angles we need to have a common denominator of twelve. Yes. So that's four pi on twelve, and that's uh, nine pi on twelve, which would be thirteen pi on twelve. Now, what we need to do, though, is we need to check this angle here because, remember, R, of Z, has got to be between negative pi and pi. So we don't need to change how we've expressed um, that 
each of the an angle between uh, negative pi and pi. So let's have a quick look over here. So 13 pi on 12. It's a bit more than 12 pi on 12, so that's out here somewhere, isn't it? Yes. Now that's further than pi, so we have to go back the other way. That one there, and if I'm going back the other way, how big is that going to be? Eleven. Yeah. Oops. negative 11 pi on 12, so that's the only thing you need to keep in mind. So 2 root 3 is this negative 11 pi on 12. All right, the vision is uh, very, very similar. So with Division, given it's the opposite to multiplication, it makes sense that you would be doing the opposite that we're doing here. So instead of multiplying there, we divide. Instead of adding there, we subtract. Again, there's proof of that in your textbook. restriction that R2 can't equal zero. Alright. So if I want to simplify this for example, So of course, when it's in polar form, you know, we can have all sorts of angles that are not necessarily exact values. Got a question? to things with, that are exact values, but you know, we can have, have kind of anything. So, what do we do? Well, we divide the R values, so these two are dividing, and subtract the angle, so it's always the one underneath from there, so 2 pi on 3 minus pi on 5, that's a half, of course. Uh, I'm going to have a uh, common denominator of uh, 15, so 10 pi on 15 minus 3 pi on 15, half cis 
7 pi on 15. The only thing that we need to do now is make sure that that fits into the negative pi to pi, which it does. So it's simple as that. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is an extension of this multiplication. It really is, relies on multiplication. It's a thing called, I'm never sure whether I pronounce this properly or not, but anyway, de Maurice theory. Again, you can look at page 177. But basically what it's about is it allows us to do power. So this theorem's about z to the n, um, this means you're multiplying stuff, aren't you? So it's an extension of the multiplication. And what it says is this. If z equals r cis theta, then when we multiply things, we multiply the r values, then z to the n we're just taking that same complex number and multiplying it by itself n times. So it's R at the n and cis n theta. And again, we're just adding those thetas together. So it's really it's an extension of uh, what we did when we multiplied things together. So if there's no number written in here, it means it is a one, yep. So using de Maurice theory, if you were raising this to the power of nine, it would be one to the power of nine. Cis, nine times, pi on three. 1 to the power of 9, of course, is 1. Uh, 3 goes into itself once into 9 three times. And 3 pi doesn't fit into the, the thing because 3 pi is all the way around to there. So we need to write it in terms of an angle that fits into our domain, argument domain. And so that would be this blue one, just around to there. Pi, right, wouldn't it? All right, so pi is included, negative pi is not included, pi is included. So this one here is simply cis pi. Now, it's kind of a little bit of a grey area here as to whether you leave it like that or do you go ahead and just the same simplify and just, do you leave it like that or do you say, all right, well, that's cos of pi 
plus i sine of pi. And because of pi is really one, and sine of pi is zero, so the final answer could be written as negative one. So it's kind of a little bit grey as to when they're saying simplify, do they think it is leave it like that or do they want you to give it like that? So you just need to be kind of guided a bit by the question and see whether they tell you to put in a particular form or not. All right, anything about that so far before we... So, one more example, which uses a couple of these things. So if you've got something like this, So this is in Cartesian form. So if you're going to do this in Cartesian form, you'll have to write those brackets, expand them, collect the like terms, etc. So as you can imagine, a lot of uh, algebra. So what we can do is we can change these to um, Cartesian, ah, uh, Cartesian to polar. So one plus i, for example. one earlier, x root 2, uh, cis phi and 4. And 1 minus root 3i in polar form. go through the working of that with you later if you really want me to. So this sum that we've got here, the 1 plus i to the power of 3 over 1 minus root 3i to the power of 5, I can then say that then that's root 2 cis four cubed over um, two cis negative pi on three to the five. And then the Mavoir's theory, root two cubed cis three pi on four over two to the five cis Make uh, five pi on three. All right. So, question, root 2 cubed, what is it? 2 root 2, correct. We've got three of them. These two, give us two, and then we've got the other. All right, so then we can go some cancel. Then we can go, all right, so I don't need to change these angles just here just yet. I can wait till later to do that. 
because now given it's divided, we can now use the division in polar form. Um, and the division in polar form says that that would be root 2 on 16. Cis 3 pi on 4 minus a negative 5 pi on 3. And then we will go root 2 on 16 uh, over 12, yes. 9 pi on 12 plus uh, 20 pi on 12. We can root 2 on 16. Cis uh, 9 and 20 is 29. I hope I've got that right. Yep. And now what do I need to do? Argument. Argument, yep. So 29 pi on 12, or 12 pi on 12, 24 pi on 12, plus another 5 brings me the year. Would that be correct? Yeah. Eh? Yes? So if it's out of 12, that's 12 pi on 12 there, 24 pi on 12 here, and then plus another 5. So the important bit is the plus another five, isn't it? All right, so the argument then is five pi twelve. And probably, uh, no, probably not exact values that way, so would leave it like that, because otherwise it would be you know, some decimal number. Alright, anything about any of that? No. So really the upshot is that if you've got addition or subtraction, the Cartesian form is the easiest one to do, if you've got multiplication or division or powers of, then Polis the easiest. Alright, so 4D.